Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton Lodge offers comfortable rooms and suites at affordable rates. There's also a heated indoor and outdoor pool along with a 24-hour fitness center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television. Crosses over, back onto the far side. Rips a shot, she scores! I'm Matt Kibbe, the current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. 
Adrian College has dozens of athletics programs and winning is a staple on our campus. We have the culture of winning in and out of the classroom. This is a place where young men and women grow into professionals for life. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. Adrian College has once again been recognized for its commitment to engaged experiential education by Colleges of Distinction, a one-of-a-kind guide for college-bound students. While higher education has changed over the past 20 years, Colleges of Distinction's selection process has stayed consistent in accepting only those that adhere to the four distinctions, engaged students, great teaching, vibrant community, and successful outcomes. Overlaid in the last few years have been a look into high impact practices. They believe most critical to the student experience were the kinds of engaging experience that are found at Adrian College. To learn more, please visit adrian.edu. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student-to-faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to 1. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life-changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store. The bookstore is where you'll get all of your Bulldog gear and you can just hang out and study in the skyboxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11-time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, 
crew and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist-affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon. What if you didn't choose to become an Adrian College Bulldog? Surely you would have carried on with your education and could potentially be graduating elsewhere. But what would you have the honor of greeting Bruiser on campus? Would you have had the privilege of working alongside faculty that know your name? Would you have had the opportunity to learn and grow in an environment that is seeking the truth and dignity in all people? Would you have had a creative learning environment that is supportive of challenging you and achieving excellence in your academics, but also your personal and professional lives. This has been Adrian College's promise to us. Just as our families have promised to love us unconditionally and support us through the many peaks and valleys of our lives, Adrian offered a similar promise to us when they realized our potential by asking us to join them. While we have been busy navigating the many what ifs of our time, none of which we could have imagined, we have indeed found the cane that holds our ribbons of excellence at Adrian to stand strong. Strength and tradition. A tradition that carries on from graduating class to graduating class. A symbolic reminder of the leadership carrying the motto, no victory without work. The Adrian College class of 2021 can proudly proclaim that we have earned our ribbon of excellence for persevering through a pandemic because of our hard work. We have to, had to learn how to best navigate the many what ifs in uncharted times. While some of the what ifs have been answered, it is now up to each of us to embrace and navigate on our own. What if I take that job? What if I decide to continue on for postgraduate endeavors? What if I decide this? What if I decide that? No matter what, you'll be able to face your tomorrow knowing that you are a member of a pack, the Adrian College Bulldogs Class of 2021. Part of the family here at Adrian College are the friends we've made. These friends have gone to games with you, shared late night tales with you, explored downtown with you, and joked around with you at Ritchie. They are in the library with you at midnight, studying for the 8 a.m. exam you forgot to study for. And they're there when you cry because you failed that exam. These friends are your new family members now. You will stay in touch with them forever, even if it's just liking their Facebook posts about the new puppy they just got. Parents, family, and friends, we cannot thank you enough for everything you have done for us. Thank you for the support, and the opportunity for this moment to graduate from Adrian College. You have helped us reach our dreams and goals in life. Congratulations, class of 2021. We finally made it. Adrian College has once again found itself on the 2022 U.S. News & World Report Best College Rankings. This is the eighth straight year that Adrian has been named to the top regional college's Midwest section. Adrian College was also named the most innovative school in the regional college's Midwest category. In addition, Adrian received accolades and best value in undergraduate teaching within regional college's Midwest. Adrian College was also named in the top first year experiences by U.S. News and World Report. This marks the 13th consecutive year that Adrian has appeared in U.S. News and World Report. To see the full rankings, visit their website. 
For more information on Adrian College, visit adrian.edu. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dejan Hughes and I'm a senior in the class of 2021. My name is Megan Abbey. I'm from the class of 2021. Hi, my name is Caitlin Parisi and I'm the class of 2021. Wow, um, as far as working for ACTV, the first thing that comes to mind is honestly the community. Like the people that I work with are amazing, all the way down from Jay at the top to the last guy that only gets to work one stream a week. It's just the energy that is around is always awesome. It's a perk that you get free access to the games, um, but I absolutely love it. We have a great culture here and then I was able to work my way up to a student director position, but I get so much creative freedom. I get to work in arenas and sports and environments that I absolutely love and enjoy. ACTV has brought so many experiences and memories that I'll take with me to grad school and even beyond. Um, it's been such a blessing to be a part of the team and everyone's just so welcoming and I've learned so much directing and using the camera and many other things. If you do want to get into this stuff, I say do it and do it quickly with ACTV because not only is it a great community, but you'll also learn a lot and be prepared for the future. I think what I'm going to miss most about ACTV that's not the um, free software that I get as a student um, would definitely be the people and the culture that we have here. Um, just the connections that I've made, the students that we have, um, just the family that we have here. I'm definitely going to miss everyone a lot. I'm going to miss everyone, I think. Um, everyone's just been so great. I love the atmosphere. Um, it's definitely another family away from home. Um, I think directing is going to be something I miss, uh, but just interacting with everyone during our meetings um, on Tuesdays and uh, just the atmosphere I think is going to be the biggest thing. DJ, Megan, Caitlin, I know I told you this is going to be a promo about ACTV, well it's actually a promo about you guys. Your leadership as seniors has helped me guide the program since taking over at the beginning of January. I would not have been able to do it without you three. Now I know your time is done with ACTV at the end of the semester, but I know you're going to do so many great things in your future endeavors. I wish you the best of luck. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus.
because of this Amazon and trying to get Amazon books in when I came from church on Sunday. They had dropped off my box of books. didn't get into all of his uh, things that I did. I uh, talked about and then uh, I got more of it. I didn't bring up a big controversy. I, and I thought that that was a good thing. Yeah. 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 Wait a few more minutes. You, you kind of wave your hand when it's past. I think it's that time because it's being streamed where those students who are unable to be here can uh, listen in. I'm Deanne Cavalier Hennigan, uh, a retired uh, speech and language pathologist from the uh, Lenawee Intermediate School District. I was there 37 and a half years, but I'm still uh, involved with things around the community and uh, with the schools. First, I bring you greetings. Thanks for all of you being here. But to Dr. Dawkins and Melinda Schwinn, the Dean of Students, and all of Adrian College's staff, students, and the Adrian College family as a whole, and our community visitors today, I feel honored to have been asked to participate in this tribute to one of America's outstanding, brilliant theologians best known for his advocacy of black theology and black liberation theology. Thank you. My prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the blessings of this day. Thank you for the time that we can come together, no matter of race, color, or creed, to pay tribute to a person who left a legacy for all of us to read about, question ourselves, and ask ourselves, how can I contribute to making our society better. I've been excited and nervous about this day, and in particular speaking about Dr. James H. Cohen. I remember coming over to Adrian College um, back in 1968 to ask Dr. Cohen to come and speak at Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Adrian. When I told him about the time that service started, it led into the discussion about Sunday services at 11 a.m being the most segregated hour in our nation. That conversation continued with discussions on the atmosphere of the Adrian area at the time. We have come a long way since then. Dr. Cohn was truly called by God for his time and given the gift to express himself. In my opinion, he expresses truths and asks questions that others would not or could not speak about whether you agreed with him or not. I say that because he lived and so did I in the South at a time when things were so much different than they were in the North. Therefore, in his ministerial studies, one can see why he wrote his first book, Black Theology and Black Power, as a product of the Civil Rights and the Black Power Movement in America during the 60s. And as he said, reflecting on both their strengths and weakness as an example of their strengths, 
He said, his book, and I quote, his book was my initial attempt to identify liberation as the heart of the Christian gospel and blackness as the primary mode of God's presence. Something to think about. I would encourage you all. I have brought some books. Uh, me and Amazon have to really work at it to get some books delivered about Dr. Cohen. Two of them, uh, Black Theology and Black Power and a Black Theology of Liberation are in there uh, celebrating their 50th year anniversary of their editions. And if you don't know it, he is the founder of Black Liberation Theology. We cannot pay tribute to Dr. James Cohn without reading and thinking of three powerful words that I saw throughout his books. Theology, liberation, and oppression. There may be other words that stand out for you, but those remain in my mind. That's why he is known as the founder of Black Liberation Theology. Before I go any farther, let me define three words that I mentioned. Theology, the study of the nature of God and religious beliefs, or religious belief and theology when systematically developed. Liberation, the act of setting someone free from imprisonment, slavery, or oppression, and released, a freedom from limits on thoughts and behavior. And oppression, subject to harsh authoritarian treatment, the liberation of an oppressed people. As I pondered these words, and reviewed the writings of Dr. Cohn, it made me have a flashback, and I thought of where we are 50 to 60 years today. Think about it. And one of the books, God of the Oppressed, made me question some of my religious beliefs. It must be read. Time does not allow for the discussion of the contents of that book, but it gives insights, insight into God and the oppressed people of this world. Yes, it focuses on black people as most of his books do. However, when you read your Bible, or should I say study the written word in your uh, time that you have, you will see and recall from Genesis to Revelation that God was concerned about his oppressed and sinful people. I don't know if you think about that, because in one of his books, he writes the God of the oppressed. I don't think people really think about that with their religion sometimes. However, uh, you can disagree or agree. Think on who was oppressing who. Dr. Combs questioned. He had questions and concerns that were um, very valid, I think. Think about what is going on today in our society. Some may say, I'm not interested in what's happening in the news. I just want to live and let live. However, Think about the one of our talented songwriters and singers, Marvin Gaye, who asked, what's going on? My question is in line with Dr. Cohn, who seemed to question our religion and the God we serve. How can we say we have religion and serve God and not be concerned about our brother or sisters being oppressed? Ask that question to yourself over and over the rest of the day. How can we be concerned about a God and religion and not be concerned about our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed? They may not be oppressed right around you, but think about those who are oppressed in different countries, down the street from you, different towns, and maybe right next door to you. They are oppressed in some way. 
In the Bible, I recall that God sent Moses down in Egypt and told him, go tell O Pharaoh, let my people go. God was concerned about the oppressed. I know some people have said they don't like to talk about politics or social justice on a Sunday morning, but you better read the Bible a little bit better and talk to God for understanding of what he requires of us all. Throughout the Old Testament, and you read about different people being in bondage, and God sent prophets to warn them of how they should act and treat each other. We don't discuss that enough. Sometimes we have little concern about that. Sometimes in our churches, we skirt or go around some of the things that really need to be said because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. But sometimes your feelings have to be twitched a bit so you can realize what is going on or question yourself what is going on in the world because there are things that are going on and we have our eyes wide open and don't seem to understand or see what is really going on. As I said, God sent people or prophets to warn how they should act and treat each other. I try to remember what is stated in Micah, the sixth chapter and eighth verse, where it says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with, our, uh, with your God, or our God, but it's your God in the Bible. That was in the Old Testament. As we go to the New Testament in John 3.16, in fact, 3.16 through 20, where God says, well, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, or only his son and only son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to have the world through him who everlasting believe in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's only son. And this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hate light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Over the years, evil has been done to oppress different races, ethnic groups, and our nationalities. But some people turn an eye to that. They don't see that as oppression. And those are some of the things Dr. Cohen questioned in his books. As I said, he question it about blacks because back in the early 60s and things, it was more oppression of the blacks. But now we are a world with many nationalities. Many of them are still being oppressed. When we sit in our churches and shout and sing freedom, do we realize where people want to come into the country and how they are being abused and mistreated? That's a repeat of how blacks have been abused and mistreated. How can we sit and sing and praise God and not realize that God is concerned about those people too? It's a lot to take in and a lot to think about. But in John, the first John, the fourth chapter in the 20th verse, it says, if anyone says I love God, yet hates his brother, he's alive. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And I know we come in contact with people right around us who say, I can't stand my brother, or I can't stand my sister, I dislike them or that but do they realize just what they are saying? Do they realize where their blessings come every day? 
Do they realize who spared them to even be alive to have a brother or sister? But our brothers or sisters are not just the ones who sleep in our homes. Our brothers and sisters are all of those who are out there. We're all God's people. And if one is oppressed, we're all oppressed. Think about that. There are many writings in Dr. Cohn's book. I didn't sit as his speed. I wish I had had a lot of classes with him. But at the time he was here, I was working. I know there are some who have had classes with him that may want to speak to some of his writings. But uh, just to name a few more that he wrote about was from Martin to Malcolm. I think he came back here in the 90s for one of the breakfasts to uh, speak, and he talked about Martin and Malcolm. Uh, they had different views early on about how the oppressed was being treated, but at the end, their views came closer together, and they began to be on a more friendly uh, level. Another striking book that Dr. Cohn has written is The Cross and the Lynching Tree. It's, it's a powerful book. It makes you think deeply. It takes a lot of patience and time to read that because it makes you have flashbacks to things that have gone on that people tend to deny they are in darkness as those who were in biblical times. I was just thinking, we went to Montgomery, and there's this museum down there with all of these, uh, I guess they're six by six, the, the size of a grave, with the names for each county in each state of those men who have been lynched. It's, it's, it's something to see. And as I mentioned, God of the oppressed, and a black theology of liberation. And the liberation comes in because you can't speak about God and being oppressed without wondering about liberation. How will liberation come to fruition for some? And this, the last one that he said, I wasn't gonna tell nobody. Very powerful. It talks about where he was born, where he came from, and the struggles that formed his ideas and opinions. And many of you have a story to tell. We each come from different backgrounds, but do we ever take time to sit down and talk with each other to know the struggles or the areas or the environments that we grew up in that shaped our lives to make us think and have the different views of each other that we have. But in the end, if we get to know each other, we will know that we have some of the same views, some of the same problems, some of the same blood running through our veins, that we need to show that we love each other and try to eradicate the hate that's in our minds. And as I come to the conclusion of this, our challenge in our world and our society today, we need to know God. We need to have a faith and a supernatural love. That's a love for our brothers, not just our biological brothers, but for those brothers and sisters who we see each day and maybe sometimes avoid seeing or looking at them or seeing their struggle. A supernatural love is a love that is indifferent it's beyond scientific uh, understanding, the love that God talks about. One of Dr. Cohn's quote is, any theology that is indifferent to the theme of liberation is not a Christian theology. If we're going to sit in church on Sundays and talk about the love of God and treat our fellow man differently, that's not the love of God. And then in another one, one of his quotes is, to sing about freedom and to pray for its coming is not enough. 
Freedom must be actualized in the history by oppressed people who accept the intellectual challenge to analyze the world for the purpose of changing it. Yes, you have to pray, or we have to pray, but we really need to understand and study God's word and ask him to help us to understand what we need to do and how we need to act. Because if one is being abused, we're all being abused. And that's not what God expects of us. He expects us to what? Act justly, have mercy, and do. And I'm trying to make sure I remember that. He wants us to, where did I put it in Micah? Showing us that he requires us to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly before him. Now, no, I didn't cover all of some of the things that Dr. Cohn said. Some of them are debatable. But he does talk about things that will make you have flashbacks. And it took me during the night to really toy with some of the things he said, but he spoke a lot of truth. And I know God instilled those in him because he has written with conviction and he wasn't ashamed of what he wrote about, but he makes you think deeply and it makes you want to question yourself Am I doing enough? Am I helping to help the oppressed? Or am I an oppressor? I thank you for your attention, and I would invite anyone who would like to make comments to come forward. I think uh, there are some who may have had some of his classes that are much more knowledgeable than I am. But you're free to come up and express your opinions, or just want to say thank you for the classes that he had and the debates that he encouraged you to have in his classes. No one has a comment or a question? I don't know if I can answer that. With the young man back in the back. Would you just stand up and tell us your name? I heard the Richardson. What's the first name? George. George. Would you like to make a comment? I couldn't hear you. Okay, thank you. How about you, right behind? Well, you may. Yes, you may come up. With the gentleman behind the Myers, would you like to stand up and just give a thought or a comment? Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Milner, Vice President and Dean of Academic Affairs here. So I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to all who put this event together. Uh, I don't particularly know a lot about Dr. Cohen. I am very pleased that I had this opportunity to learn more about him and I very much look forward to reading some of the works that he has put forth. Clearly the work that he has done has been so profoundly impactful, not just to the Adrian College community, but certainly to uh, our country at large. And it's a legacy that he has left behind that continues to influence uh, our students and scholars and community members to this day. So I very much look forward to learning more, and I appreciate everyone's uh, support for this event. Thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised more don't have any comments. 
because in the um, 60s, during the time, I know in 1966, when Dr. Cullen was here uh, at Adrian College, the, um, the riots were going on around campus. I know just before I uh, moved here that summer, uh, the 12th Street ride, and there were riots all over. And uh, it was a summer of turmoil. But even before then, there were things that had gone on and different areas of the country where people were being oppressed. And conditions were much different than they are today. But we still have some of the things going on today, just in a different form at a different time. And uh, we still need to be concerned and ask ourselves, how can I help? How can I do something or help somebody along the way so our living won't be in vain. I thank you. Oh, and I was going to say, all of his books can be ordered off Amazon. Uh, they will get them to you overnight or day after. I do want to mention in the uh, library here on the campus, we do have an exhibit for Dr. Cullen that has been displayed for the last couple of weeks in honor of Black History Month. So I invite all of you to stop by the library to view that. Dr. Goldberg was um, so gracious to put that together. Um, and many of our students have been able to exhibit the um, resources that are there as well as the um, resources online for Dr. Cohn. So I appreciate, again, Dion Hennigan for being here today. She is my go-to. Um, she enjoys coming to the campus, so I appreciate her um, as we serve together on the MLK uh, Celebration Committee. So again, one uh, round of applause for Dion Hennigan. <laughs> if anybody does have any uh, further comments, suggestions, or um, would like to learn more about Dr. Cohn, please um, feel free to email my office um, in the Student Affairs and um, or Dr. Milner as well in Academic Affairs. Thank you.